Okay, some jobs are just ugly. Some jobs are not fun to do. And frankly, some jobs I don't really like getting into. I am using spurs on this palm tree. It's a fan palm. A palm is a little bit different. There's all kinds of stuff inside these trees. You never know what's going to come out at you. There's rats. There's squirrels, there's spiders, there's owls. Oh, there goes a squirrel. And there's nests. There's all kinds of nests that get up inside here. But there's also the possibility of these big groupings of dead fronds peeling off. There's been stories of people that have been killed by these whole uh, skirts of palms that, have, that were so loose they came, came off while you got underneath them. Now, there's trees in the backyard, so I can't get up there with uh, with a bucket truck. Um, I hate using spurs on any tree. Uh, monocot is probably, you know, the the least amount of damage is going to happen to this tree. But it's a smooth, it's a it's a trunk that's been smoothed off. Each of the fronds has been cut clean, so it does show the spur marks. I am trying to spur on the backside. You notice I started with a ladder, so that the, the marks were. You know starting up higher I'm also using my electric chainsaw which I am finding to be a real blessing you know imagine climbing up underneath this mess and starting a gasoline you know smoky loud saw uh, you know this this saw is, is pleasant to use you know granted it's not as fast now uh, the client did this this was kind of cool she was an Asian client she picked one of the fronds and made a <laughs> so here's what it looks like when it's all finished you notice I didn't take all the fronds out and we did chip the fronds and sometimes I wonder about chipping the fronds because it almost fluffs up and makes it even worse I hate production work you know we do a fair number of condominium complexes and townhouse associations and a few business parks and in order to be competitive, you can't do these types of jobs based on an hourly cost. Let me back up a little bit. Almost all of my residential work, I charge out on a time basis. I charge out for, I try to go a minimum of one day. And that does a couple of things. Number one, it ensures you're going to get what you need to keep the business going on every single day. <laughs> But it also gives you the time to um, really do a good job on the trees. You know, if you've got a great big oak tree and you want to do a real special job on it, um, if you're working on time, you just keep going. You know, it, it makes sense to me. So here I am working on this really ugly job today. It's uh, an Aleppo pine. Let me see if I can turn the camera around here. It's Aleppo pine. It's one of the ugly ones. It's full of deadwood everywhere you look. And that's the nature of the beast. But because we're in a townhome association here, they want these things to look pretty. So you gotta clean them all the way out. Sometimes that means you gotta take out some of the interior branches just to get rid of all the congestion. But it takes forever. And I'm working on a price per tree situation here so what happens is I end up looking at these things and saying okay I've only got so much time to do each tree and the truth be known I could spend all day long on this tree you know it's just it, it, everywhere you look there's deadwood you know it's just I've, I've been up here for a few hours already and you know if I if I do the job right I'll lose money so you know here, here comes the dilemma, you know, do you do a good enough job uh, remembering that they can't see everything from the ground? Or do you get up here and really, you know, take pride of workmanship and, and do everything and, and lose your ass? You know, it's sometimes it's, it becomes a compromise. You know, I worked up here all day yesterday and yeah, I lost my ass. It just, you know, it didn't work out. And I've got another five trees to go. There's no way I'm going to get five trees done in another day, so I don't know. Sometimes I think I'd just give up all business parks and all the competitive bidding jobs and just stick with my residential work where people are happy paying me an hourly basis.
So the question comes, you know, how much do you charge by the hour? Well, what I do is, is I figure all my expenses and I add them all up and then I divide that by, by 20 because there's roughly about 20 working days for every month, you know, and that's taken into consideration vacations and holidays and stuff like that. So it averages out to about 20. So you take your monthly expenses, you add in payroll, you add in all the, the little things that could happen. Um, you have to add a contingency for repairs. Um, and then I like to do a little bit of a buffer for the what ifs, because the what ifs always happen. You know, the flat tire always happens. You know, you gotta, you gotta think about all of that. So, you know, for a three man crew, you know, I've gotta bring in at least $2,000 a day and so I worked that out to, you know, roughly $85 per man per hour. And in my area, that's, that's pretty fair. Most, most people are charging more than that. Um, and it works out okay. That, that way every day, you know, if I've got myself and two guys working with me, um, you know, I'm, I'm gonna bring in 10,000 a week and, you know, all my bills will get paid, I'll get paid, everything works. But, you know, the, the what ifs, you know, sometimes you get into a complex job and, you know, if you bid it high enough, sometimes you'll have a three or four thousand dollar day and then you get caught in that, you know, well, you know, maybe I just need to start bidding everything really high. Then you end up wasting a lot of time because there's so much competition for people bidding for the same amount of same work. So, I don't know, it's a, it's a rat race. I don't know, some days I just, I don't know, I just want to go to work and do a nice job and you know, I'm, I'm not worried about being highly competitive. I, I just want to be fair. It is what it is. So the trees we're working on are uh, Aleppo pines, Pinus halepensis, and they're sticky, ugly trees. Lots of problems. And now we're starting to find the sequoia pitch moth um, are actively seeking out the um, Aleppo pines in the past, they seem to favor the Pinus radiata, the Monterey pines, but the Monterey pines are are dying, um, and and they're almost a tree that's becoming, you know. Someday, I think they're going to be extinct in our area because so many insects attack them. Um, typically, when you see a dead pine along the side of the road, in our area, it, it is generally a Monterey pine, but more and more now, the the Aleppo pines are succumbing to many of these problems and here's where we're working typical condominium complex hey thanks for watching